All right, I wanted to do a video on the Garmin GPS Map 276 CX. Um, <clears throat> I've had this GPS for a while now. Sorry, the video is a little dark, but I'm filming it in the garage with the uh, lights out. Um, that way uh, we can see the screen a little bit better. Uh, so I've had this GPS for uh, just about a year now. I actually got it last December and uh, figured it was time to go ahead and do a review on it, kind of a long term and kind of go through some of the pros and the cons that I've had with the, uh, with the GPS. So let me go ahead and <clears throat> turn the light on. Um, so here's the box that it came in. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, um, I'm actually coming off using the GPS uh, map 78 and you can see the huge difference in screen size uh, between the two models. I think this is a little over a two inch diagonal screen and this is uh, over five inches so um, it's actually more than double the viewable screen size. Um, and, and that really just helps in for me what I call situational awareness while riding um, rather than trying to focus on this tiny screen bouncing around kind of on my handlebars especially at a much lower resolution quality image um, this GPS acts more like what you would have in a car except that it is ready for dual sport use and by that I mean um, it's push button so that's I'm always a fan of the push button um, a lot of times if you're riding you're wearing gloves and sometimes touch screens such as the Garmin Montana or the Oregon can get a little glitchy if you're using gloves because it doesn't know if you're trying to wipe the dust off the screen or if you're trying to navigate somehow. Um, this GPS is fully waterproof. It's actually a marine GPS. You can see um, Here's where the batteries go. Uh, there's the little micro USB cord, optional antenna, and I'm actually, I'll go ahead and open this up. And it's got a lithium ion battery that, um, according to the specifications, has a 16 hour battery life. Now I'm sure that all depends on uh, a lot of your settings, uh, energy settings, backlighting, and uh, things like that. But you can also see, I'm a big fan of redundancy when it comes to GPS's. And you can see, even if this battery were to fail, um, it can actually also take three AA batteries. And with the three AA batteries, I think the life is a little bit shorter. Um, don't quote me, but I think it's in the order of... Uh, probably four hours and again that all really depends on your choice of battery as well um, so let me go ahead and get this cover on again it's it's waterproof and so uh, so I really like this because it is waterproof it actually is a marine GPS so it's waterproof it's vibration proof if you've seen any of my videos um, it's never had any problems with the spills and the bumps and the rocks. Um, so I've really had good luck with it. Now, out the door, this GPS, I got it off of um, Amazon and it ran me, it wasn't cheap. So I, I'm going to put that as a con because it was, I believe, $530 to get this unit. Um, and I did also elect to buy the 100,000 K topo map so you can see the actual hill shading. Um, I always find that useful when dual sporting. And then I also added uh, the routing to be able to make it just like a car GPS and to be able to do routes um, rather than just track. So uh, another thing I went ahead and got was the uh, screen protector of course this does have a larger screen and it can be vulnerable if you throw it in your bag uh, I actually spent that was uh, I believe this was uh, 20 bucks so 
so uh, the, the topo maps were 100. The routing was another 85. Throw in some screen protectors to put on there. And you're getting really close to about a little over $700 all in. Um, I, I've also added uh, the Garmin temperature sensor. So you can see actually in my garage right now it's 68 degrees. And basically that is reading from this sensor that I've put on my uh, handlebars. Uh, another pro that I really liked about this GPS is it actually came with this mount. Uh, when I ordered the GPS, um, I, I ordered an additional arms mount, but I was gladly surprised when I opened up the box and it already had one of these in it. So basically it, it goes in here and locks down. You've got all your waterproof connectors. I don't know if you can see them down in there. And if you're not using it, you can actually put that down and uh, cover up your wires. So it mounts very solidly. Uh, of course, I'm using a RAM mount to get everything situated. And I've got it basically wired straight to the battery um, for use when it's on the motorcycle. Okay, now that I've actually uh, got the light out, I'm going to kind of go through some of the settings um, on the GPS to kind of show you um, how it operates. So pretty much uh, there's a menu button and you can use that to go through different settings uh, on your map. Here's uh, change data fields and that basically allows you to change your data fields up here. There's a list of about oh, 50 different things you can use. Uh, of course I just have speed, outside temperature, general direction, and a clock. Uh, I find those to be the most useful. Um, let's see, configure maps. This allows you to go through and select which maps you're using. So generally I have my worldwide map, uh, topo map, and the routed, routable map. But here's my Explore West Virginia. I've already loaded up the uh, MABDR, uh, the TAT according to GPS Kevin. So you have the optionality to turn off and on different map layers. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And so your map's set up. And this is where you kind of get into your general settings, uh, at what level of detail you want on the map. Um, here's a, a key in orientation. Basically, do you want north up, track up, or automotive? Of course, automotive gives you that view kind of like a car GPS where it's kind of a slanted screen and you're you know driving into the map. Um, let's see, quit. And everything is pretty much done by the controls. Over here to the side, it's just up, down, left, right, and enter uh, to pretty much do all the settings. So you have different uh, shaded reliefs, uh, waypoints, marine, we're not going to use that. And this just uh, determines at what zoom level different things start to appear and disappear as you zoom in and out and uh, pan around the map. So we can go ahead and quit that. And let's go to the main menu. So this is basically where all the, the work is done. So here's uh, the GPS screen. It tells you your level of accuracy. Uh, right now I'm at about 18 feet. Uh, of course, I'm using GPS plus Glasnost uh, to find my location. Uh, so we can go down through the routes, we can create routes. You have the ability to put in over 250 different routes, uh, points. Of course, uh, you always want to put home in, a couple campgrounds, a couple, you know, points of interest you might want to go to. And you have the avail availability to use 10,000 of those, um, tracks. So here's my current track. Uh, I kind of just did a loop around the neighborhood and, uh, so it's telling me my ascent, uh, descent, the area that I went around. Um, here's a weather screen. So this is actually hooked to my phone right now via uh, uh, internet hotspot. So the, the GPS can actually take my phone and receive information from it. So here's a forecast uh, for right now. And you can also go to the map. So if you're on this and there was actually 
um, impending rain coming, you would actually see a, a radar view like you would see if you were to go to any other weather map app or you can see a couple little storms up here in Ohio. Uh, so that's good for awareness if you're out and you think you're gonna have some weather. But again, you have to have it connected to some sort of uh, Wi-Fi or hotspot. So if you're out and there's no cell phone service, of course this option isn't gonna work. Alarms, uh, really no need for those unless you needed to wake you up in the morning. Uh, calendar, so you have a day view, a week view, and it's telling you sunrise, sunset, is it a good day to go fishing? You know, all the important things. Uh, celestial, so here's, you know, sun, again, sunrise, sunset, and it actually shows you where overhead the the moon and the sun should be, but I find that kind of redundant. And what phase of the moon? Um, so some of these options, you can, once it's paired with your phone, you can actually pair it to your phone via Bluetooth as well. So if you get text messages, they can pop up on the screen. Uh, I never do that because I, my, my aim when dual sporting is to get away from people getting in touch with me. And here's the setup. This is where a lot of the, the grunt work is done. Um, so here's your system setup. Again, I use GPS plus GLASNOS. Uh, you know, this is where you really set up the options that how you want the GPS to work. Uh, so I'm of course using it for automotive, but you know, we don't want to use marine. Uh, so here's your display. Uh, these are the kind of the default settings that I've used to basically, if it's unplugged from my bike, then it's kind of in a power saving mode and the backlighting will go off in a shorter amount of time. But if I hook it to my bike, the backlight stays on and it also determines what the GPS does when you plug it and unplug it into your hard wiring. And I, I find these to be the best options. Um, when uh, when using it. Bluetooth, I have that off right now. Wi-Fi, you can see it's connected to my phone. I could have also connected to my house, but that's pointless if I leave. Uh, routing, this is much like any other GPS. You have the options for motorcycle, cycling, and this really just determines your routing method. Do you want to, uh, you know, uh, do you want to get there the curvy way, the quickest mileage? the least amount of ups and you know elevation change so you can change all that in there tracks it's of course always keeping your track as you're moving around and you can export that as a gpx file um or even i think you can attach it to a fitbit if you would want to do that uh altimeter um so this works in two different ways you can use it as an altimeter and it will show your elevation change or profile, or you can set it to be static. And what it actually does is it uses the barometer to look for impending bad weather. So uh, that's kind of fun. Sounds, I always keep all those turned off because you can't hear them anyway. Uh, here's a good one, the ant sensors. So you can actually hook this device to a heart rate monitor, a uh, bike cadence sensor, um, speed sensors, speed i'm sorry bike speed sensor and here's the tempi sensor so this is the little sensor on my handlebar that tells me the temperature uh outside uh timers uh what format you want the time you know do you want metric or uh i will say american units and your format for locations so that is kind of the uh overview of some of the settings